All right, look here. I'm about to say some stuff, okay, that um, you ain't gonna like. All right, you ain't gonna like this. And discretion advised, there's gonna be me saying some racial stuff. I'm gonna sound like a white boy for a minute here, a racist white boy for a, you know, a couple times in this video. I'm about to do a Candace Owens on your black behind, okay? If you hated Candace Owens, okay, for her stance against her own people, you're going to hate a D-Roy Cruz stance against his own people. First of all, I don't even believe in Juneteenth. I don't even believe in Juneteenth. We don't need that holiday. That's, you, know, you know why there's so much violence on Juneteenth? And there was some crap that went down last year on Juneteenth as well. Okay? Because why? It's of the devil. You don't need any more black holidays than what you already got. Okay? Now, but you got a black holiday. Now, I'd like to know. Please tell me. How a bunch of black people, kids, start shooting each other on their own holiday. How did that happen? How? How did that happen? How did that happen? Y'all started shooting each other, killing each other on your own holiday, and it wasn't just Chicago, it was other places too, at the same time as some black crap went down. You got to learn to leave the black crap at home. Okay, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a little secret that will help you no matter what, whether you're conservative or Democrat, if you feel like you're going through some black depression respirations or anything like that you want respirations you know you feel like the world is down on you because you are black or whatever okay this is what you need to do you need to leave your blackness at home focus on the country and consider yourself outnumbered so the way you because see immigrants know how to do that black folks don't know how to do that but immigrants know how to do that you don't think all these Arabs and Indians and Spanish people go home and talk about my black butt every day? You think they don't go home and talk down on white people every day? You know what I'm saying? There's, just, and there's a guy I work with. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Indians are known. Now, this guy is from... This guy is from... Um, where's he from? He's from Pakistan. He don't, I, 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 you know, he's a little humble looking for a guy from Pakistan, but he's from Pakistan, nonetheless, okay? He has been teasing me ever since I got my car. You know, um, just like, just bugging me about, you know, showing me how much money he makes more than me and other people that work there and what he could do with his money and he went out and I said this yesterday in a video he went out and bought a car okay that is the same make and model as mine but it's like 2019 and he paid he supposedly paid less for it because he paid it straight out he's coming to work every day teasing me when I went to work last night he says hey D you know roll out you know he said hey D come on man why don't you buy my Hyundai man and I'm like okay I told him stop it right now stop stop and I didn't speak to him the rest of the day he knew I was mad he knew I'm getting sick of it like I told him stop right now don't say nothing else about it. Don't mention it again. Don't say nothing else. Tell me about no car. I says, stop right now. Enough is enough. Okay? 
And, um, you don't think he goes home and talks about me? What a loser I am and how black people have bad credit and all that kind of stuff. You don't think he does that? But you know what? I talk to him like a white man would talk to him. Stop! Right now! And what would a white man do? Go straight to his boss. And I got people at my job that hate me. White men that hate me. Because I went straight to their white boss. And their white boss gave them a final warning. Like, this happened again. You want me looking for a job, my brother. Okay? My white brother. You want me looking for a job. I hear somebody telling me some crap like this again. You're going to be out looking for a job. So they hate me now because, you know, they thought their boss was a pushover until, okay, the security department had to crack down on his boss and see how he's running his side of the business. You know what I'm saying? When he got people snapping out in the middle of the night on people because, oh, they just want him to do his job and they ask him to do it in the most nicest way possible. Oh, F that floor. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing I'm, I'm up to my ears. I, I said, okay, well, I just look at him like, you sure? You sure you ain't going to do it? You know me. Okay. Now, if he had said to me, I can't get it today. I have to get it next week because I'm booked. Uh, anything but chew me out and tell me what he ain't going to do. Okay? Because I know he's going to do it. You know. And he didn't do it that night. And I took him to... It was bad enough he chewed me out the way he did over nothing. I took him to his boss. Okay? Because why? It works for the white man. Welcome to America. The white, this is what white, man, white men do. When they have a problem, they go to their superior, superiors. Don't you know that all of them... Ku Klux Klan uniforms and all that stuff that they was doing in Mississippi and, you know, down in the blues states, down in the places where B.B. King walked and made race music out of it. Don't you know that they all have superiors that keep them out of trouble? Don't you know that they, their superiors have put them in jail for making them look bad? Oh, yeah, they all racist. But there's certain things you do, you don't kill in certain areas, you don't, you know, you don't cause riots and stuff like that, even though you're a Klansman, Klansmen think they Christians, and they Catholic, and they think, you know, they think that they're more, they're better acting and more pious than everybody else. So, you know. You got a black man on that TEDx thing talking about how he sat down with the top leaders of the Ku Klux Klan and they told him a lot of crap is about to end. Okay? But here's where I want to go with this. Um, Juneteenth is... A black holiday, and I didn't see nobody dancing and nobody celebrating but black folks. And it wasn't white folks or the KKK, okay, or Antifa or anybody that went up there and started throwing rocks at black folks and running people over with cars and stuff and started shooting. It was black folks. How does a bunch of black folks start attacking each other on their own holiday? When this is y'all's time to get together. I agree with Candace Owens. I don't give a rat's ass about no goddamn Juneteenth. She said it, I'm going to say it second place. I don't give a right, rat's ass about, I don't even celebrate Black History Month anymore. I'm so sick of y'all. I, I don't celebrate Black History Month anymore. The only hol the holiday that I might do something on is Martin Luther King. It's Martin Luther King Day. That's the only one. Other than that, I do not care. I don't give a rat's ass about, you know, anything black. The minute something's called, I got relatives and friends. Hey, you ought to come down and check out the black workers of the black, black, African, black, black, African, American, black, and black, and black. I said, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. 
you know, I'm doing fine without it. Because the minute you add the word black to something, okay, then we got issues. We have a problem, okay? We got a problem. The minute you add black to something, we have a problem, okay? And I don't get into it. I don't get into it. I don't get into it. Okay? I don't get into it. Um, what I want to say real quick is leave your black at home. Leave your black at home. Okay? Leave your blackness at home. This is how you survive in America. You don't think that I want to scream at white people sometimes? You don't think I want to uh, 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 ask some very controversial questions to some of the white people to call themselves my best friends sometimes? Yes, I do. Okay? But this is America. This is the United States. Nothing has ever you know, advanced or progressed from a black attitude. See, Spanish people got attitudes, but they make sure they display that around Spanish people only. You know, like now, unless you live in a certain part of L.A., you know, but up here in the Pittsburgh area, up here in Pennsylvania, period, these are the most mellow Spanish people you ever want to meet. I mean, these guys are smooth and cool and calm and forgiving, and they don't complain about squat. However, I caught them at home. I caught them. You know, I rode up into the neighborhood when they was out there, you know, had them cars parked on the lawn. You never seen that car at the job. Like, yo, my man, why didn't you tell me you got a Toronto, man? Like, who you think you are? Clint Eastwood in that Toronto film. My man out there with a Toronto, like, you know, he's like, yeah, D-Roy, what you doing out here, man? What you doing out here? You follow me home? No, no, bro. This is what I do. I ride. And I rode, and I found you. You can't hide from me. But now that I know that you know you parking these fancy cars on the lawn, I don't want to hear no mess about you po. Okay? You just as po as me because you ain't, bro. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, he keep they keep their Spanish anger at home. They keep their Puerto Rican anger at home. Okay? They keep their anger at home. And even Mexicans that are... When they come up here to Pittsburgh, they tend to be very, 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 very well behaved in Pittsburgh. I wouldn't say Arizona, Texas, L.A. I got friends that have lived out there, and they'll tell you some stories. Nah. They'll tell you some stories. Okay? They will tell you some stories. Um, I got friends that, you know, live down in them states. and uh, Or they lived down there for a while and then they moved up here right around, you know. Um, and this was before Trump, okay? They said, these guys be acting up. You know, you go in certain neighborhoods and they try to segregate. They want segregation, you know. They want segregation in California. California, is a, California, Mexicans and other Spanish colonies are a total different thing in, in Cali, okay? They're a totally different thing. Totally different thing. Totally different thing. Okay? Totally different thing. And, um, you know, but they keep their anger at home. I've seen these guys. I've heard these guys, you know, 
pulling out their guns on some black folks and some white folks, you know, dealing with some road rashers, you know what I'm saying? I heard about these guys, you know what I mean? They, they got a little business and some black folks come in there, you know, thinking they was going to shoot up the place. They got shot first. They didn't, they didn't stand there and act like it don't happen like white people do or Indian people do. Like it just don't happen. <clears throat> you know, and I know a lot of Asian people, you know, that, that, you know, they don't let you know that they hate you because they have to work with you, you know what I mean? They have to do business with you. They can't make any money hating on black folks because they need black money because they post all their stores and businesses in the ghettos. So they need that black money. Okay? They need that black money. But they don't like your black butt. Okay? And you go into, you've seen the stories. They've been over and over and over in the, in the Pittsburgh newspapers. You've seen the stories. These fools going, going into a hair salon, okay, and they want to make a big deal over a quarter, you know. You know, like Asian people, when they sell you something, they automatically take out the tip. You know, that's just the way they are. You you know, like, like I've had Asian women, little cutie pies, you know, doing deliveries, coming to my house, and, you know... They saw a five and they snatched it and ran. They didn't ask me what I want. You know, I said, well, let me get a tip. You got change. And before I finish, before I get hit the G in the word change, they had got back in the car. She had got back in the car and drove off. Okay. Took my five and ran. I was going to give her $3. But see, black folks, I'm not going to cry over $2. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to cry over $2. Okay. I know, I know, like, I got relatives that got shot over $2 by another, excuse my French, another nigger. See, there's, there's black folks, and then there's niggers. And a lot of y'all that I see every day, okay, you niggers. You know how you know a nigger? You know a nigger because he has a habit of waiting for something to jump off. He has a habit of trying to make something jump off. Okay, just like a guy got in my Uber a couple weeks ago. I'm trying to have a conversation with the guy. He's talking down to me like we about to jump off. Like you get in my Uber, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be friends with you. I'm driving you to a location. Everything I said, I don't know what his mom did to him, but everything I said, he was like, oh, well, this is your car. Oh, oh, well, you been that corner like that. And, oh, they probably, oh, I hope they ain't looking for you. I hope them cops ain't looking for you. Oh, I hope, you know, he was just going off, man. I'm like, dude, I'm just making conversation, man. You know what I'm saying? You didn't feel me run over something that was, that, that was about a whole foot long? Like, you know what I mean? I'm just wondering, you know, well, you did it. Oh, my God. You did that. Dude, I know I did that. I've been the corner too tight and I didn't see what I hit. I know that. Well, you did that. You know, I mean, he was just going off. You know, and then when I asked him, where are we going? Oh, Rankin. Okay, like we're at in Rankin. Rankin, Rankin ain't, Rankin ain't a house, dude. We're at in Rankin because I didn't see it on the GPS where exactly, you know, what part, you know, exactly what kind of place in Rankin that we're going to. In Rankin, you know. Then we get to Rankin, man, and it's like there's about like 12 guys out there in black t-shirts. It's 2 a.m. in the morning, and they saw me pull up and they just froze. Then he gets out of the car and they took too busy, you know, acting, you know, talking about what they what's about to jump off. They get ready to do something wrong. I don't know what they get ready to do. They get ready to do something wrong. Two o'clock in the morning dressed like that, okay? I drove off. I drove off. I drove off before I put, you know, before I pushed the button, I I got out of there because I don't trust that, you know? Don't trust that. But, nevertheless, um, 
Y'all need to leave your black at home. You need to leave. Oh, what's this? I don't want to get over here. I want to get over here. This little town here that I ain't never been to. And I'm getting ready to. Yeah, what is that? I should be over there. In a little town there. Y'all go on and turn up here. Oh, okay. This is, oh. I see where I'm at. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. Oh, and this will take me back out. Okay, I got you. <clears throat> uh, hold on. Got to pull over. That light helped me up. I got to pull over. Hold up. Let me see. Let me see. I got a place up here I can pull over. Pull right in here. Got to fix this. Got to fix this. Um, <clears throat> good. Um, but as I was saying, okay, um, today's my day off. I'm going to go home and get some sleep. So I'm going to just sit here for a minute and finish my little story instead of trying to, because I'm in the unknown territory here that I haven't been to. And I got to find a way to circle back so I get my way back to where I want to go because I'm tired. I want to go home and I'm not in the mood to ride around very long. I, I want to go home and get some sleep. But um, the point is, is that you don't have to, first of all, let me say this, Walmart, McDonald's, Wendy's, Arby's, Burger King, you name it. They're not reparations for black people. They're not black owned businesses. And even if they are black owned businesses, these people that are running these places are more conservative. They're not in the mood for your nonsense. The problem with the Democratic Party is they have gained this fear of black people and black people are running for it. Right now, I'm so, I, I, for the last, ever since before Donald Trump, I say over the last 10 years, I've been so sick of black people that I don't care if white people bring out fire hoses, bring out the dogs. Wherever you see a black man acting a fool in front of a bunch of white people, bring out the dog, bring out the fire hose, okay? Bring out the billy clubs, beat that brother like Rodney King, okay? Step on that brother's neck like George Floyd. That's right, I said it, because you need to learn to leave your black. See, this is the difference between black people and everybody else. They think it helps them to embarrass themselves. See, 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 you don't realize that you're embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing good guys like me and a lot of other good black people I know, men and women and children, that I know that are good people, good, clean Good people, whether they're conservative or democratic, they're good people. But yet, most of y'all don't mind embarrassing yourself. And you, the thing is, you don't realize that you're embarrassing yourself. You think you're standing up for what? what okay, 
Who gave you a right to go in McDonald's and jump over the counter over a french fry? Over some chocolate milk or a milkshake or, 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 or pickles on your hamburger or whatever. I've went places, me and my daughters and another pastor friend of mine, we, we used to go to the same Ponderosa because it was, it was our favorite Ponderosa. We used to go in there and depending on what white girl was working our food behind the counter in the back of the kitchen, and I miss Ponderosa with a passion. I mean, I feel like building me a Ponderosa, but we used to go to Ponderosa every other Sunday, or almost every Sunday, actually. And there was always somebody leaving their hair in our food. Like his daughter would pull hair off for ice cream. And he was like, you ain't got to eat it. You know. Um, he says, just ask him for another one. And she was trying to like get a little bit emotional about it because it happens pretty frequently. Well, somebody should say something. He's like, well, there's a comment box that you put that in. Okay. But then he said, but, you know, if it's going to happen that often, maybe we should stop going to Ponderosa. Maybe we should boycott Ponderosa because they keep, you keep finding hair in your food. No, she said. She said, no, I just want something done about it because I really love Ponderosa. Okay. So, you know, um, he did say something to the manager like the third time it happened. And uh, he said something to the manager about his daughter finding hair in his ice cream. And the boss got mad. The white man got mad at his white people and went back there and said, okay. And he came back out to our table and he said, you know, we're going to have a meeting about this. We got a meeting coming up. Bear with me. We're having a meeting coming up that's scheduled um, for this month, near the end of this month. And I, w I don't want to just crack down on her, but I, I know the girl because other people have had the same problem with her hair being in their food. And I keep telling her she got to wear a net. She refuses to wear a net. He says, but we're going to crack down on this, you know, the last week of this month. And bear with me. We're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to stop this because we're getting a lot of customers that are complaining about hair being found in their food, especially their milkshakes. And I know what girl I have on milkshakes because he had a special girl that did all the ice cream products and stuff like that. So let me tell you something. Everything that you go through, black people, is not you the only person going through it. You're not the only one. White people are going through it and every other race that eats fast food, if that's what we're complaining about, every other race that works a housekeeping job, every other race, okay, that, that, that parks cars, every other race that gets pulled over by the cops, okay, whatever it might be, you are not the only one. And when white people are racist, they're not just racist towards black people. They're racist against everybody that ain't white. And black people are the same way. Black people are the same way. They're racist against everybody that is not black. Okay? Hi. The races against everybody that ain't black. And there's a lot of black people like that. Be honest. It'd be different if black people were these kind-hearted, loving people who just want to love everybody and invite strangers into their homes like they do in the Philippines and, and just, you know, give people massages like they do in the Philippines. Free massages and feed them whatever they got in their refrigerator. And if you want to give a tip because I'm poor, I live in a third world country, be my guest, but I'm just going to love you. If black people were like the Filipinos, I could probably understand them flipping out on white folks. 
Because how dare you take my kindness and shove it up my butt like that, okay? But you're not that, you're not, you're, 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 you are the last on the list of holiness. You are at the bottom of the holiness list. You are the church that never survived. You are the church that was practicing a false cult. You are the church where all its members got arrested and thrown in prison. You are the church where they went in there and found drugs and they found blood all over the place and they found, you know, um, um, a mess. Not only did they have to shut it down for the violence, they had to shut it down because of your rage of throwing stuff around and running the temper tantrum. And I, and I know from my experience, I can go anywhere. Me, I can go anywhere. And a black person can find a reason to set something off, just randomly get angry and set something off like, okay, we're sitting at a table and, you know, maybe, maybe he's lonely. Maybe he didn't bring a friend. I wouldn't come here unless I had a friend. I don't come here by myself. This dude's mad because he didn't bring a friend. So he wants to say something clear across the room to get under my skin because he, I'm black and he see me sitting there with some non-black people. Okay. And then when I tell him nicely, no, nah, brother, that's not the way I think about it. You know, I explain who everybody is. We may even shake hands on it. Okay. And then he'll, and then the more we try to befriend this guy, even my white friends, the more they try to befriend this guy, he gets angry. You know, I got on the bus not too long ago. I did a video about it. I got on the bus, and there was nothing but me and this black bus driver on the bus. And this is what I mean when I say black folks embarrass me. I go and I sit in the back, in the middle actually. He starts talking. I can barely hear him, so I move up to the front. He gets really loud. I didn't move up to the front. I moved up to the middle. He gets very loud. And he starts talking about George Floyd and all. This was long after George Floyd was over. Okay? This was after Donald Trump was out of office and all this stuff. He just starts hating on white people and claiming that we're going through slavery and all like that. I says, brother, you make just as much money for driving for the bus company as the white man does. And I know this for a fact because I got a lot of white friends and black friends that work for Port Authority, okay? I says, how is that racist? Well, you know, these white people this and these white people that. I says, okay, you're making just as much money as these white men starting off, okay? There's no reason for you to do anything but go to work, drive your bus, and go home. You can't, you know, you're, 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 you know, like, what made you, I had to ask him, like, what made you just randomly think about this? He couldn't answer that. He couldn't answer me. It's like a demon spirit. He couldn't answer me as to why he just all of a sudden wanted to bring up George Floyd and start talking about all this crap, you know. Then this white man gets on the bus. We're about five minutes into it. White man gets on the bus. He sees I'm trying to walk away. He, th This is what I love. This white man knew me from the bus driver. Even though me and the bus, bus driver, we started to get into a heated discussion because he was saying some dumb stuff, so my voice started to elevate a little bit. And I'm thinking, he's embarrassing me in front of, the, in front of the, this white man. There's going to be more white people getting on his bus, and he's embarrassing me. I'm about to just sit down and ignore him. But then the white man was only getting off at like four stops. So he walked up to the bus man. He said, hey, brother, I just want to let you know, man, that I love America and I love everybody in America. 
I would be lonely without you guys. He says, I love every race in America. I don't have any racial feelings towards anybody. He says, I agree with you. What they did to George Floyd was wrong. I agree with you. Um, you know, about, you know, slavery and all that stuff. But he says, I just want you to know, man, I love you. That's what this old white man said. You know what he said? He said, man, get the fuck off the bus. That was it for me. I went and, I went and, uh, just get off the bus. Because you're talking stupid. Just get off the bus. Okay, I just want you to know I love you, man. Get off the bus. Leave your black at home. If you get up in the morning and feel you're thinking about George Floyd, wait till your friends come over to the house. Grab a beer and sit down and talk about George Floyd. Don't talk about George Floyd in public because you're going to find out that a lot of black people don't give a rat's ass about George Floyd. George Floyd is not a monument. He's not something to remember. He was a thug to put a gun to a pregnant woman's belly while they robbed her house. Okay? And beat her up. Okay? He put a gun to a pregnant woman's belly. Okay? If he had, if Derek Chauvin hadn't have choked him out, okay, this would have been his third time in prison. Or fourth time in prison. This guy was a, what they call, a career criminal. We making statues of this fool. I don't care. In every state where they let you burn down statues and do stuff of that nature, okay, all in the name of trying to please black people and make black people feel more comfortable in this country. Forget the Asians, forget the Native Americans, forget the Spanish, forget the Indians and the Arabs and, 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 you know, forget that. We just need to make black people more comfortable in the midst of their hatred, in the midst of their demonic spirit, and everything else will fall into place. That's what Biden thinks. That's what a lot of white people think. That's what a lot of white Democrats think. If we could just, just suck your knob enough we could make world peace in America but what Spanish people don't need world peace you know the Asians don't need world peace you know I've never had anybody of any other race correct me racially. Now, I've seen them assume that because I'm black, oh, I'm not going to know where I'm going. I'm not going to know what I'm doing. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that. I think this way. I think that way because I'm black. I've seen them do that. But truth of the matter is You need me. She might need me to back up. I don't know what she doing. I don't want to be in her way. I might want to just uh, pull in here. Park, park it right. They getting ready to have something going on here. Let me park this bad boy right. Park it right. She's probably wondering, what is Blackie doing? See what I mean? Oh, we got a parking space right here. I can park right over here. There we go. I'll park right here. I don't know what kind of place this is or what's going on here. But I'll park it here. This is good. Anyway, more private anyway, and I hope I'm not keeping her, is she going in this way? Back up a little bit, okay, she's going in because these doors here, all right, that's good. But anyway, I'm closing.
She's a security guard. Anyway, I'm closing. Leave your black at home. Um, don't say, this is a project. I want you to try this out this week. I want you to try this out for a month. I want you to try this out for a year. Leave your black at home because you are an American first. You live on American soil. You pay American taxes. Your house is owned by America, okay? You are a resident of the state inside the country of America, okay? All right? You speak English as a first language. You don't know your native language if you had one, okay? Look, looky, look, 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 look here, look here. Leave your black at home. Like when you get up, whatever you feel about McDonald's, leave it at home. Whatever you feel about your boss at work, leave it at home. Do not say nothing about white people in public. Don't say nothing about you being black and you being miserable and, and, and playing the race card. Don't say nothing about that crap at home. I mean, don't say nothing about that crap on the street, at McDonald's, at the job, at the bus stop, on the bus. Don't do that. Okay? Don't do that. Leave your black at home. If you just leave your black at home and wait till you get around black folks in the privacy of your home. I didn't say the back of the bar. I said the privacy of your home. If you get mad, don't get mad. Find a solution that will win in your favor. Because you know punching somebody is not going to do nothing but get you arrested or get your butt kicked or shot. Okay? But whatever you do, do, do it professionally. Don't talk about white people or black people out on the street. Don't talk about it on the bus. Don't talk about it at the hotel, in the public hotel lobby. Don't, you know... Do it in private, in secret, like white people do. Like Spanish people do. See, when Spanish people complain about your black behind or your white behind, they make sure you don't know Spanish. Or they just don't talk about it till they get home. And they know nowadays that they got to be careful because a lot of black people, okay, know Spanish. But the thing is, the reason why you get away with so much stuff because you're not getting away with it in Puerto Rico. You're not getting away with it in China. You seen what happened to that basketball star? You seen what happened to other people who, other black people who went to Japan, went to China, went to some of these Asian nations and tried that crap they do here in America? They got arrested. Donald Trump had to bail them out. Joe Biden had to make a trade. They come back here crying. And they, 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 you know, they put you in jail for being, for, for, for acting like a black fool in, in, in a Chinese or an Asian nation. I'm watching all these YouTube videos where they keep making new laws because you got more black people coming to the Philippines now. So now they got to make more laws because the black people have already come out there and they act a fool. So they're making new laws and they're saying you can't do this and you can't say that. You can't even do this on social media in the Philippines. You got to watch what you say on social media because if, you, if they find you out, your visa is over and you're out the door. You're back on a plane headed back to America. You can't even talk that racist crap on social media. You can't say, oh, these racist Philippines. That could get you locked up. You call a Filipino a racist. Okay? They're letting you come over there and impregnate their women and give 
There are women, a bunch of Asian, half black, baby, baby kids. They're letting you come over there and have sex with their women. They're letting you, you know, they're letting you, you know, just have your way over there when it comes to the sexual revolution. That's almost the sex capital of the world over there, you know, between Thailand and the Philippines. But you say some racist crap over there. Okay. Say some racist crap. They're going to lock you up. They don't play that crap here in America. I mean, they don't play that crap in foreign countries. I had a friend of mine. She said, you can't, you, 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 you. she said Spanish people, she's, she's Puerto Rican. She said in Puerto Rico, Spanish people are different out there than they are here. Okay. All right. They'll have you strapped down in a bathtub somewhere, okay, drowning you in the water the minute you say the word black or white in a negative light in their country and claim that they racist. Okay? You'll be Puerto Rico's part of the United States. You'll be calling on Donald Trump to get you out of Puerto Rico. Leave your blackness at home. All that black stuff. I'm not talking about your lovely, bubbly Christian personality. I'm talking about black this, black that, white this, white that. These mother effing white people. And then this nigga right here. And then I'm about to pop a cap in this nigga. He say one more thing to me. Oh, look at him tailgating me. Oh, oh, he, he what? You, you know, leave that crap at home. But why did that happen on, why all the shootings and violence and, and upset over Juneteenth? Because it's of the devil. Okay. Is July 10th a white holiday? Is July 10th white history month? Like, I agree with, with um, Jesse Lee Peterson on that. I agree with Jesse Lee Peterson on that. I agree with Jesse Lee Peterson on that. You know what, black people? You make more racism happen than really does exist. It is your fault there is so much racism in America. Why? Because when you fought back in the civil rights movement, you went from fighting back to just picking fights. You went from fighting back, you went from fighting for education to not caring about education. You went from fighting for property to destroying property. You went from complaining about your right to build a family and start a family, okay, to having all these kids, baby kids to be exact, out of Whitlock. And then you leave the woman and don't care about them. And then her black behind, you leave, she just gets crazy. You better get your butt home before she put that child in the microwave. You better get home before she sell that child to a pimp for some food stamps. You shouldn't even have food stamps. The day you got food stamps was the day you said, hold up. I'm going to get on my feet and build a life for myself. But no, what we do is we walk around here, black this and white this all day. And I'm in this rep because I'm black as the white man. But how come the Asians ain't saying the same thing 
the Indians and the Arabs ain't saying the same thing. The Spanish ain't saying the same thing. The, 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 you know. And, and I noticed that I've, I've had, like, we got, I've, had, I've worked with Russian guys and guys from Ukraine and Bosnia and stuff like that. Okay? These guys sit down with me and we talk. But, you know, I've seen white people criticize people from Russia. You know, um, what's that group that's in, um, and they're known to have a temper problem? Everybody, not Aryan, but um, I forget what you call them. They live, they're out of Seattle. It's like half of Seattle is this white race right here. Okay? White people hating on people that have white skin because of their culture that they inherited from another country, black folks. Like, I know when I worked at the chocolate, good old chocolate factory, a lot of people didn't like the Bosnia dude. They thought he was arrogant. And then the mechanic dude, who was an MMA fighter, okay, which is, he, his country's known for MMA. I forget what the name of his country was, but uh, he was from, he was from Seattle, all the way from Seattle. And he moved up here to the States to get better jobs. And, you know, he got married and he ended up in a divorce and stuff like that. But he's a really cool dude. And out of all the people to put me down for being small, this tough guy didn't put me down for being small. He treated me like I was gold. And he had my back with everything. But there were people that didn't like him because of his actual race. Which even though he... Is Caucasian, he's not called a white dude. He's called whatever they call him in Seattle. I, I forget what the name is. I think it starts with an M. I forget what the name of his race is. But a lot of them live in Seattle. They are like the basic race of Seattle. Seattle, you know, clear across the country from here. Um, but in closing... White people don't like all white people. They judge white people based on where they are white at. But I can agree with white people, and I can agree with anybody that escapes their country to stay over, to come to this country, even though they had to come to this country and deal with some segregation issues and stuff like that. I can have a good conversation and deal with anybody that comes over here to find solace, to find better income, to find better jobs, to find family life and history and, and beauty. And, and I, I, can, I can get along with anybody. Okay? I can get along with anybody, you know, in that rut. It doesn't matter whether they're black, African, okay, Asian, Spanish, Native American, okay? And the Native Americans, they're dealing with racism by living on reservations. I think it's stupid, but you're, you're, you'll never see a, a Native American in a riot. You'll never see a Native American, okay, go in McDonald's or, or, or Burger King or, or any of these places or go to a parade, a, race, a racial parade or Black Lives Matter, Antifa or whatever and do crime. They got the same rights you do, but they chose to leave them rights to the, to the reservation. You'll never see an Amish person. I've had Amish people talk down to me and ask me for money and then didn't trust me to count it right. Okay, I'm going to go home and say something. I'm not going to say it here, but I'm, I'm going to talk to some Amish people that got my back. I'm going to go to them and, and vent on them and tell them what I'm going through here. But I'm, you'll never see an Amish person in a riot. 
You'll never see an Amish person go and destroy McDonald's. And they do eat at McDonald's. You'll never see that. We are the only ones in this rut. We are the only ones that are this stupid. We are the only ones with this much hate and rage. It's a demonic spirit that the devil has placed on this particular race. And you need to set yourself free and get out of it. The best thing for you to do is, number one, leave your black at home. Number two, stop hanging out with black folks so much. Maybe a lot of white people will hang out with white people. Maybe a lot of even Spanish people will hang out with other Spanish people. And they tell you why right here on YouTube. But black folks, you need to break, give yourself a break from black people. Okay? You need to give yourself a break. Okay? You need to give yourself a break. Give yourself a break with these black folks. My man driving that thing? He's driving that big old truck. Why, Danny? I gotta get out of here. Wow. He from North for sales. Am I? Am I? I'm an F for all. But anyway, I'm getting out of here. Um, D. Recruit your life applications officer. Leave your black at home. Don't express all your anger and all your resentment about you being black or african-american out in public white people don't care other black people you just going to depress them more further than they are other races don't care you're just making a fool out of yourself set yourself free get yourself out of this entanglement leave your black at home okay and when I say leave your black at home, I'm saying leave your black friends and neighbors at home. And leave your black cousins at home. And leave your black business and anger and resentment. Leave it all at home. Okay? Leave it all at home. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. I am D. Roy Cruz. I am your life applications officer. This was fun.